Hello everyone, welcome along to Chargers TV. It is our end of year show, Ronald Meeks, Justin Bryan, alongside you here at Swisher Hoops Academy at the West End side, our new home for Chargers TV going into 2022. But before we start our end of year show, uh, our sincere condolences to the six families that have lost their loved ones uh, in, the tragedy, in the tragedies of last Thursday. And uh, our prayers of course will all concerned as I welcome in JB. JB, not a fantastic, um, situ not a fantastic thing to, to, be, to be bringing in, into our NBA show, but very unfortunate. All this very unfortunate under the circumstances. Yeah, you can't really, um, yeah, you can't really think of words for it, Ronnie. Really. To be honest with you, it's yeah, just yeah, no good. No, definitely not. It's affected us all, and of course, uh, uh, um, a sincere thoughts to the Harrison family. It was Chase Harrison, an up-and-coming junior basketball player in Devonport, played with the Northwest side in the Tri Series for the FDP program and the basketball Tasmania as well too. We send uh, uh, conditional love to the family and their thoughts and prayers. Uh, there as well too. Let's get underway with our new year show and let's start off with an absolute bang and Dwayne Davey has re-signed as women's head coach uh, of the Hobart Chargers, Joe Yes, has re-signed as women's head coach. Is, uh, another head coach decides to uh, <laughs> show us what made him an absolute star in Perth back in the day. But no, it's great to see Dwayne Davey back on board. Uh, we'll get Dwayne's press conference up in a minute. But uh, Dwayne looking to bring a bit of cultural change and a, a fairly local flavour once again to the team in in 2022. Uh, as he mentioned, never really got a chance to smell the roses in his first time around, but having coached a lot more junior basketball and in particular coached a lot more senior women's basketball in his time away from the main gig here at the Chargers, uh, he's been able to develop his coaching and the way he goes about things a lot better. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Dwayne goes in 2022. Absolutely. Let's get the thoughts from Dwayne Davies. He spoke to the media a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's, a, it's an exciting time, I guess, to be involved in the sport at this level. So. Um, Certainly when the opportunity came up, obviously I did have to think about it with family and things, but um, you know, I'm really excited by the challenge and, and jumped at the chance, so yeah, absolutely. What are your strongest feelings about the security and coaching the women's uh, program? Uh, look, that was, that was a really enjoy an enjoyable experience, and I think um, you know, I learned a lot through that, that three years, um, and obviously having the chance to have a couple of years off and, and take stock, obviously, um, there's obviously things that I, I want to change and, and do better, and, but also things that I want to carry over from that time as well in terms of um, the culture building and that sort of thing. So really excited to have the opportunity again and um, yeah, really glad that the, the club's got faith in me to do that again. So the fourth stand from newly appointed women's head coach Dwayne Davey. And JB, obviously Dwayne with a lot of work to do going forward, but it has a very good lo local young talent base around him to get him started. Absolutely, and they have been training really, really well over the last couple of weeks, and they're definitely doing two sessions a week, and I know with some smaller group sessions as well. So girls have been hitting the floor two, three times a week uh, very early on in the preseason with a warming up in Hobart. So getting that cardio and that conditioning in as well has been key for them. As you mentioned there, you know, Dwayne, you know, getting that almost a second coming as a head coach here at NBL One level, I think he's going to really relish the opportunity. A great local flavour, but again, he's got some good experience around that side as well. And it's going to be a matter of the girls being hungry and wanting it uh, more than being handed it. You know, not necessarily a level of entitlement, but changing the culture to, you know, this is the work you've got to do to reach this level and to progress in your career. You don't just rock up because you're from Hobart and get a gig. It's not that simple. Uh, absolutely, no. It'd be, be, it'd be great to see Dwayne back out on the floor in the Chargers polo shirt, or maybe a suit as well too, JB. <laughs> yes, I think Dwayne's wanting to uh, suit it back up, which is quite nice. We've uh, we got the suit in the photo, but we also got a suit uh, on press day as well. I think Dwayne's recruitment of some uh, senior stars is going to be interesting as well. Uh, who does he recruit? Don't know. You know, stretch five and usually a really nice dynamic guard or wing player is what he needs. But I think ultimately he needs to bring in some players that okay, they can fill their roles, but they need to be leaders on and off the floor. We don't just want girls uh, and ladies who are just putting the stats up and all of a sudden doing what they want off the floor. No, they've got to be gym rats. They've got to come in and they've got to set a standard. They've got to show that uh, our younger generation of talent that, okay, it's all well and good to get in the gym and it's all well and good to turn up on game day, but it's, it's the extra sessions. It's looking after yourself on and off the floor. You know, it's knowing when to go out and have fun with the team, but it's also knowing that when to rest up and really recover and recuperate. So, yeah, usually, you know, we see a stretch five and, and usually we see, you know, a dynamic wing player or even a guard, but I think it's going to be on and off the floor that leadership that these girls bring that ultimately, I think, is going to bring more value than what's on the floor. Anthony Stewart has committed 
to his second year of a three-year deal, JB, and great to see Stewie back on board with us. And, of course, Stewie trying to distract us while we are recording, but now down working with a young, youngster down here down on the bottom of the floor. But great to see Stewie recommitting for his second year. Yeah, awesome to see Stewie recommit. And, as we said, Stewie very confident in the year just gone that he would have a side that was going to win at least the South Conference of the NBL 1 Championship there. And a very confident man... Uh, was the man who thought they would win it all, particularly on a national stage. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Stewie goes moving forward. He'll make a little brief mention there about getting a custom banner made for the NBL 1 South <laughs> yeah. season. So we'll see how Stewie goes there. But no, very confident that he can retain his players and very confident that the Chargers, providing the season goes all the way ahead, can go all the way in season 2022. Absolutely. And, of course, Anthony Stewart declined to come on uh, to a uh, recording of our interview show today. But let's pro to his presser from a couple of weeks ago. It was over. Um, it 100% uh, I felt comfortable that we, we had a championship. Uh, coming off the third game of a road trip against guys like Pete Ling, our bull that plays with the Cairns Taipans, Adam Gibson... Uh, Ruben Tarangi, all NBL guys. They had a, basically a starting five that was all NBL, and on a third game of a road trip, we took care of that pretty comfortably as well. So we came back off that just saying uh, it's we were very, very confident going in towards the end of the season that it, it, uh, it was a championship ready to go. So the fourth there from head coach Anthony Stewart, and of course JV Stewie been working with our local brigade here over the last couple of months. Of course they're training at least twice a week, once here, and I believe once at Moraine as well too. JV, so good to see the good to see Stewie is still working with our local talent and and preparing for what will be a very tough 2022 Coles Express MBO One South season. It will be a very tough 2022, Ronnie. Ron, uh, charges. Coach Anthony Stewart, I've managed to flow that very nicely. He has been working in the off-season, he's been working with a lot of our local talent. I do know he ran an individual session for some young fellas here as we record on the Monday before Christmas. Uh, but I also know that Stewie is in very high demand from a lot of players right across the country because the word is spreading that you want to come and play with Stewie because it's fun to play with Stewie. Uh, Stewie is a guy who sets you up uh, to work on a game style and work on a game plan that works specifically with his coaching style and the ability to run and gun and stun and have some fun to steal some words from the great Cal Bruton. Yes. But Stewie's, you know, he's a very defensive-minded coach, but his offense is flow. It's about getting your shots up. It's about firing away. Uh, and that's something we saw a lot here in season 2021. I know that guys like Jack Purchase, Tad Dufelmeyer, you know, that squad wants to run it back. Your Cohen Sapwells, your John O'Mines, you know, they want to run it back and do it. But I know that there are a lot of good young talent across the country that is uh, very keen to come and play with Stewie. So we'll see how that one pans out. But there's no doubt there's a lot of great depth locally here in Hobart at the moment. They are working their backsides off with Stewie and he's hoping to provide them with as many opportunities as he can in season 2022. Absolutely. Stay tuned on our social media for future announcements as Anthony should, I have no doubt, make some announcements on his squad going forward. Let's quickly talk about the AGM outcome and, of course, uh, current chairman Brett McKay was un un elected unopposed and... Uh, He's, he's back on as, as, as chairman of the club, not president. We're using chairman now as, as a title, and that's the title he preferred to have there, JB. So great to have Brett back on board. Yeah, it's great to have Brett back on board. And a big thank you from Ronnie and myself uh, for the work that Brett has done in working with us and making our seamless transition uh, into working in the media side of things a bit more thoroughly and certainly from the way Chargers TV and our social media has flowed in season 2021. Looking forward to that again in 2022. Corey Davey back on board as well, Ronnie. Yes. And a big shout out to uh, Robin Fannin and Kim Upton, who after their five, six years on the board uh, are departing. And massive thanks to them, particularly on game nights and oh, keeping yes. us organised, and particularly Robin as well and her cons with the league as well. They've been sensational to work with. They're going to be a massive loss to the club. Um, they are some real stalwarts and they've been some really strong characters through what has been at times some really tough times for the club. I I don't think the club would be in the position they are in, particularly without these, without those two ladies. So a massive thank you uh, on behalf of Ronnie and myself to them for the hard work they've done as well. Uh, here, here on that one, JB. Let's go into um, some of our funniest moments that we've had throughout the year, whether that's in broadcast here or recording on Chargers TV. That is for sure. So Jacob Dool has come to us. Of course, he's our he's our courtside reporter, and he sent me a message through over the weekend saying that. 
his funniest moment was basically um, sometimes in the uh, the phone kind of cutting in and out or not not ready to go when we're trying to ring him when we were high up on that scaffolding early on in the season. So. Yeah, our, um, our three metre Peter scaffold was certainly of no help to anyone at times, and I think we'll touch on what my funniest moment is in a sec. I'll let the, yes. let the viewers guess on that one. But, yeah, trying to ring Jacob and trying to get uh, the unique way we broadcast that uh, that scenario to Jacob there. We eventually, you know, getting down a bit lower, just getting Jacob pretty much to jump in the huddle or make a headset on and talk back to us was a lot easier. Personal standpoint, it was uh, the unique experience that was the three-metre scaffold, trying to get up and down, trying not to move while you're on broadcast, all that sort of stuff, put a lot of fear in the lives of, uh, of these two particular yes. gentlemen, Felix, our <laughs> cameraman as well, and, you know, certainly as well, I can imagine the spectators watching us wobble around high above up in the gods there as well. So, yeah, that was always a joy in the first half of the season, that's for sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, my funniest moment would be the scaffolding, as much as it was daunting at the time. I like but talking about bad OH. You know, well, it was safe. It was, was marked safe. safe. Let's make that but, clear. But uh, very, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I wouldn't say dangerous oh and but uh, at times some questionable oh and in the way we moved around on that thing. But, no, it, it was a joy. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, my moment of the year, and it's uh, Jacob's as well too, the uh, game winner from Joe Mines uh, back early in the season, uh, where he banked that one off the window on a drive to, to the bucket. So there you go. Joe, that your favourite moment? Honestly, when we managed to set our season high scoring and uh, just see the young fellas get on, get some points, your Harry Griffiths, your Phoenix Robies, your Luke Browns, really getting the stadium involved. And, you know, there were plenty of times where I went to town as uh, Luke Brown, Phoenix Roby or uh, Harry Griffiths. Oh, right. Giving me a basketball soon worked out the fact that I was neither of those three gentlemen. But it was great to see them getting on. And ultimately, it was great watching that 10th, 11th, 12th spot on the bench in the men's program constantly being siphoned and being cycled. It was a new face in that position every week at home. Those young fellas getting breaks on the road as well. It's just great to see the young development, the future development of these young kids uh, in a Chargers uniform. It's going to be great to see that moving forward, particularly in 2022. Uh, absolutely. And of course, just from a, a women's standpoint, great to see some uh, uh, younger uh, local uh, women getting on, on the floor. Manny Garrick's um, three-quarter time buzzer beater from half court as well too. Just a couple yes. of moments yeah, for the women there, Joe. Yeah, getting the call of Maddie when... Um, Ronnie suggested she only needed a two. She did not care, and she no. put up a massive three. A lot of close game there in the games in the women's where they were nearly able to steal a couple of victories. But again, seeing that talent develop, your Maddie Stratzmas, your Eliza Vanderkamps, seeing Zoe Banks uh, develop into a genuine starter at NBL yes. one level, uh, and seeing Leah Bartlett come along, joining the squad, you know, just at the start of the season there, getting some minutes uh, and playing some vital rotation uh, minutes as well. It was good to see that. And uh, again, you know, there is some promising young talent in the women squad uh, for the Hobart Chargers and moving forward into 2022, you're going to see that develop a hell of a lot more as well. Uh, absolutely, and of course when we reflect back on the season JB, it, could, it was what could have been for the men and what could have been for the women as, as they were starting to gain a little bit of momentum there as we were going along the season. Unfortunately COVID had, had taken out the season unfortunately but these are the uh, normal times at, at, at the moment but you know, in other news, of course, around the league, the league has signed a, a major sponsor in Coles Express coming on board as a naming rights, and that's a, and now the league is now national. Uh, Darwin joining joining the NBL One North, NBL One East, which uh, replaces the Waratah League in New South Wales. They're jumping on board uh, along with you know we've got NBL One West, NBL One Central, NBL One North, NBL One South. And now that's all now a national league, which is fantastic to see. And it's the only sport in Australia that has a total national league uh, running all over the show in every state, territory, uh, and pretty much every capital city as well. So basketball is on the rise. Uh, personally, down here in Hobart, jack jumpers at the NBL level have had a major impact on that as well. You know, streamlining that pathway for our juniors to go, OK, if I want to come in at Swisher and shoot around at five, six years old, I can clearly see my next pathway is going, you know, doing some Swisher programs, doing your athlete development, your um, your, after, your future development programs, uh, certainly with BTAS as well, you know, making state squads, making NBL one-level squads, you know, being able to go to college or in turn staying on and playing professionally here in Australia as well. It's great to see a very streamlined pathway now for our juniors as well. As we mentioned, what could have been with the men, certainly think a championship was there from a Tasmanian 
standpoint as well, while we talk about it in the South, three of your four teams were genuine top four, genuine championship contenders in the Tornadoes, the Thunder and the Chargers men here. The women, you know, I think it was the season they had to have, honestly. You know, they wanted a local flavour, they wanted to develop their local squad, but they needed to see where they were at as to what uh, building blocks and pieces needed to come in. So that was well established. But again, it, it was good to see, you know, the women really showing where they could be when they needed to be at times. You know, obviously weren't as uh, pumped up as we thought they were going to be, but a, a very good litmus test and just to see where our, our local crop of players at and, and just what sort of development is needed as well. So, you know, tough learning curve, certainly a learning curve that was needed and no doubt 2022, uh, they're going to be better for it, no doubt about it. Of course, Colts Express, NBA one South competition will kick off around about April we're hearing, so stay tuned again on all the socials of NBL1 uh, to find out uh, when conferences get started. And speaking of social media and speaking of Stewie running across our set, thankfully not in shot. Yeah, the geriatric <laughs> shuffle. Yes, absolutely. You can follow the Hobart Chargers on their social media. You can give us a like on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, give us a follow on Instagram, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well too. So don't forget to keep up to date with all the goings on here for you, McKay Timber. Hobart Chargers. JB, we need to thank our sponsors. They've been incredible to us over 2021. And we need to thank Swisher as well, too. This is going to be the new home for Chargers TV, where we're going to be recording all of our shows. And pretty much we'll have most of our media conferences here as well, too. Yeah, and certainly going to have the potential of some catered media and conferences. Shout out to the Swisher Cafe who brought out some cake off cuts uh, to please the media scrum yes. that was here a couple of weeks ago. It's great to have the home of Chargers TV here for season 2022. Uh, and again, a big thank you to all our sponsors. No doubt we'll, uh, we'll roll that sponsor list one more time as we yes, head out. Yes, we will, JB. Abs absolutely. We'll get that up on the up on the screen. I wish we had the um, cue card here for it because we give it a good we give it a good run. Actually we'll run the sponsor role before before we sign off. That's what we'll I think that's, that's what our we'll best probably do. that's our best idea. Yes, we've still got that on archive which is good so <laughs> and it'll be fantastic to see. Um, we are looking for a cameraman next year. So if you um if you have some camera experience or like get some further experience in camera work, we're looking for a camera operator to help us out because me and JP did it all this year and I think we found out there was a bit too much on our hand on game night. Um, we have a new um, graphics designer. We do. We do have a new graphic me. designer, the great Louis Dilger. Yeah, yes. um, uh, informally signed over um, a quite cordial or two on Saturday, um, but it'd be great to have Louis involved. And uh, we might just flash a couple of graphics up here that he's done for our home football club here, oh, the yes, Queenstown, course, yes. Queenstown Crows Football Club. So a couple of graphics there by Louis. It's going to be great to have him on board. And uh, you know, again, more experience, more exposure for the young man as well. And uh, we can't wait to see what he's going to deliver for us in 2022. Absolutely. We welcome Louis to our team here at Chargers TV. And, and, and uh, as I said, if, if you have, do have some camera experience and like to help us out on game night, please get in touch with us through our social media channels. Uh, and we, we'll, one of us will endeavour to contact uh, you back for I think, I think the interview. I think the best thing too, if you're wondering what sort of camera work we need, it is only on game nights. We, Ronnie and I have the presses covered in our little post-game interviews, so to speak. But as far as what's required as a camera person to operate uh, in the, at the NBL1 and, and during the games, just jump onto some of the highlights for NBL1. It is basic panning and framing, uh, but it is pivotal, but you understand and how, how all that works as well. So, yeah, jump online, have a crack, and uh, if you think you're the right person for the job, let one of us know. Absolutely. There you go. So you've heard it here first on Chargers TV. That will pretty much wrap us up for this edition and for the year as well. Too. It's been an absolutely fantastic year calling games with JB and, of course, running everything and anything with JB around the Chargers, of course. And we wish everyone a, a Merry Christmas and a safe and Happy New Year. We'll be back in early 2022 to give you uh, an update on where the men's program and the women's program is at. But in the meantime, enjoy your time with family and friends and loved ones. And we'll see you next time here on Chargers TV. On behalf of the McKay Timber Hobart Chargers, naming right McKay Timber, our Platinum Sponsors for the women, McKay Timbers, for the men, Clinton's Minor 10. Our gold sponsor, Swisho Hoops Academy. Our bronze sponsors, Halls Water Wastewater Treatment Services, Jaco Hobart and Salters Higher Contra. Shout out to our scoreboard hero and our graphics you will see on social media. Core staff, our community partner, Wilson Holmes. Our mental health partner, Speak Up, Stay Chatty. Our media partners in the Mercury, 7HOFM and Beetle Black Media. Our corporate box sponsors, including THA, Davy Street, Discount Pharmacy, Lion Co and North City Cars. Our coaches sponsors tonight, Dobson Mitchell Allport sponsoring Mark Nash and core staff 
again sponsoring Anthony Stewart. Finally, our player sponsors, Rockwell Bar and Grill, Precision Plumbing, Taz Trans Enterprises, Sam Proprietary Limited, The Barber Shop, Bellamac, Home Smarts, Mermaid's Takeaway, The Hanging Garden, Halls Water Wastewater Management, Bulk Nutrients, JMC and Express Service Centre. As they say in the classics, Ronnie, yibbity yibbity.